Hello, good morning and good morning and good morning. Welcome to this beautiful and wonderful day. We give glory to the Lord. We thank Him for His mercies. Every day that we witness another day, we just give glory to God. The greatest miracle is that you are alive. Hallelujah. That is the greatest miracle, to be alive, to for God to wake us up and, and, and we are able to see another day is the great to me is the greatest miracle. Because if you're not alive, you cannot do anything. So every day that we are able to wake up in the morning is a blessing from the Lord. And it's the greatest miracle. So you are already blessed this morning and we give glory to the Lord this morning. Hallelujah. My name is Dr. Michelle Carson, I'm speaking to you from the city of Rumia, north of Poland. And I thank God this morning that you are able to join us for this beautiful time of fellowship and sharing the Word of God with you this morning, encouraging you and for you to be able to go out there and make life a success. Praise the Lord. Uh, we have been on... Uh, this uh, because of the unusual year that we found ourselves we've been on 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 the, the strategy of how to navigate the post covid 19 season you know 2020 like i've been saying is a, a wonderful year <laughs> praise the lord it's a wonderful year <laughs> unusual things has happened that which we never expected has already taken place and man, who knows what more can still happen but god knows that is that is that is my source of faith that god knows tomorrow and i put my trust in him i hope that you too you put your trust in the living god and so we've been sharing on this strategy <clears throat> on how to navigate the post covid 19 season Yesterday, I shared with you on the topic that says uh, the sermon of the mother of Jesus, sermon of Mary, the mother of Jesus. Uh, and, and I want to be able to continue in that uh, dimension. And today's topic is the power of obedience. Because in yesterday's uh, uh, devotion, we talk about this, that sermon which she preached in the book of John, chapter number 2, um, from verse 1 downward. It was in on the occasion of the marriage you know, party that they attended. They were invited to that party uh, and they went there as guests to that party. But like I said yesterday, there would have been some background uh, that they, they were related somehow because when Mary got to that party, she was not just in the position of only a guest, but she was up and down until she find out that this party is running out of wine and that there is no wine and that she then she went to the son and said hey these folks are out of wine can you do something and the son said mommy give me a break my time is not yet and then she preached the most powerful sermon uh, in the scripture and it says, whatsoever he asks you to do or he tells you to do, just do it. That's what she turned and told the disciples. And then she walked away. And a few, who knows how long afterwards, when Jesus felt that the time was right, he just told the disciples, you know, uh, there was, the Bible said there were six pots of empty uh, water, you know, empty pots of water sitting there. And Jesus just told them, fill these pots with water. And like I said yesterday, uh, it, water in Israel is not, you know, that you, it's not today that you just turn on the tap and the water start running. You know, that was not the situation. They have to walk quite a distance and, <clears throat> and fetch the water to be able to fill those pots. And then after they reported to him and said, hey, uh, master, it's all done. And I'm not, we, you need to listen to yesterday's sermon to be able to get an insight of what we're talking about. Then the master said, take this and give to the MC of the party, the master of ceremony. And when the master of the ceremony drank that water, 
which I believe was still water until it touched his lips. It turned into wine and she called the, the, the celebrant and the, the, the guy who organized the, the bridegroom and said, hey, what's up with you? What's wrong with you? Why, 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 why are you doing things upward? Everybody, you know, in this kind of a party, they always present the best wine. And you keep this one to the, till everybody's, you know, drunk. Why, why would you do that? And I think that the, the bridegroom would have been flabbergasted because he knew he was already out of wine. <laughs> Hallelujah. And just said, well, you know, he, he may not have had it, said, whatever. I don't understand what you're talking about. Well, praise the Lord. That is the, the, the recap of yesterday. And I said, but let, let me emphasize this, that Mary was not strange. You know, it was not strange for Mary to, to obey, you know, because right from the onset, that the Bible talks about uh, her in, in the book of, uh, in the beginning of the gospel, where the angel visited her and told her, hey, Mary, you are beloved, you know, of God. God has blessed you. You are blessed. And I said, well, what kind of a greeting is this? And he said, well, you will become pregnant and you will give birth to a child and that child will be the savior of the world. And then he looked at the angel Gabriel at that point in time and said, what are you talking about? How can I be pregnant, you know, if I do not have to have sexual intercourse with anybody? And the angel said, something like this, the power of the Most High God will overshadow you and, and there will be a spiritual incubation and then you know, no, then you become pregnant. That is, you know, never heard of, it never happened. And what did Mary say? Be unto me according to your word. I accept it, I believe it. So Mary was that kind of a person that, you know, she has experience of, you know, obeying even the very unusual instruction, something out of the blues. So it was not strange for her, you know, at all. And when she said to the disciples, she said, you know, whatsoever she tells you to do, do it. Praise the Lord. So this morning, we want to continue in that dimension to talk about the power of obedience, obeying the word of God. The Bible truly admonishes us that we should not be only the hearers of the word, but the doers of the word, those who put the word of God into practice, who go out there and do exactly what the word of God states. And it is when we when we do this that we can experience the power of God. Because God has promised that, you know, he will watch over his word to perform it. He also said that the word that goes forth out of his mouth will not return unto him void, but it will accomplish that which he has sent. So God has given us guarantee that when we obey his instruction, he will do exactly what he says. And this is this is the bottom line of walking with God because you know sometimes we we don't really want to obey God. We just want to do things our own way. But God said, "My ways are not your ways, and my thoughts are not your thoughts. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways. As east is far from the west, so are my thoughts far." From... So God has clearly said it. So if you want to work with me, you just got to listen to me and obey my instructions and then you will experience my power a lot of people want to experience the power of god in their life a lot of people desire to experience the power of god in their life but let me tell you this morning the simplest and the easiest way to experience the power of god is just to obey god's instruction that's what it takes to experience the power of God. You know, you don't have to, you know, this is not rocket science. You don't have to do something. Just do exactly what God says. And whether you understand it or not, whether you comprehend it, just understand that God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that you can ask and think. You know, God is able to do beyond every segment of your imagination. Your brain is too small to comprehend, to understand what God can do. 
So, you know, if you really want to experience the power of God in your life, wherever you are right now, the most the simplest step is just to obey his word. And this is where I want to take my Bible reading this morning from the book of Luke chapter number 5. Follow me and take up your Bible this morning. Let's get to the book of Luke chapter number 5. In the book of Luke chapter number 5, we're going to read about from verse 1 downwards. And I will tell you to stop about verse 11 or so or 12. We will, we will stop somewhere there. But let's read the word of God this morning. Luke chapter number 5, reading from verse 1. I am reading from the King James Version of the Scriptures. You might have the NIV or whatever version you have. The story is likely to be the same. But let's get into the word of the Lord this morning. I read in Luke chapter 5, verse 1. And it came to pass that as the people praised upon him to hear the word of God, he stood by the lake of Gennesaret and saw two ships standing by the lake, but the fishermen were gone out of them and were washing their nets. And he entered into one of the ships, which was Simon's, and prayed him that he would trust out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the people out of the ship. Verse 4, and when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, Launch out into the deep, and let your nets for let down your nets for a drought. And Simon answering said unto him, Master, we have toiled all the night and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word I will let down the net. And when they had they had this done, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes, and their necks break. And he beckoned unto their partners, which were in the other ship, that they should come and help them. And they came, and they filled both the ships, so that they began to sink. And when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart! From me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. For he was astonished, and all that were with him at the drought of the fishes which they had taken. And so was also James and John, the sons of Zebedee, which were partners with Simon. And Jesus said unto Simon, Fear not, from henceforth thou shalt catch men. Hallelujah. What a powerful story this morning we are reading from the Bible. The Bible says here that, you know, Jesus was ministering to the people and the crowd was too much. And this was by the lake and the lake was called the Lake of Gennesaret. And the Bible says something that that I that catched my attention when I, I read this scripture. He says something that he saw. Two ships standing by the lake in verse 2, but the fishermen were gone out of them and were washing their nets. This shows to me, this kind of signify a uh, kind of a frustration, uh, a situation that is unproductive, a life that is unproductive, a dream that seems impossible to attain, the goals that seem too far to reach. Uh, I have said it that this year has started as an unusual year. Praise the Lord. With the advent of the coronavirus pandemic and almost half of the year looks gone. And, and many have, would say to themselves, well, the year is already gone and we're still on lockdown or they're just about to open, nations are just about to open up at this point in time. And it looks like we have lost quite a lot of time already. 
This is today is the fourth of June, 2020. And the year half of the year is already gone. A greater part of this year we have spent on the lockdown, and nothing has happened. Just sitting there, you know, in the house, and and right now the situation still is not very good outside there. Yesterday I heard in the news that there is so much of outbreak in the South America, in the in the nation of Brazil, is taking a toll. And last week it was United States that reached a mark of 100,000 deaths. And if you follow the statistics globally, you will find out that the COVID-19 is still out there. But, you know, people and nations and governments and companies are tired of being under lockdown. And now the doors are being opened. Last Sunday was the first time in about three months that we were able to go to church and the government will allow us to go. Now, the situation, you know, is not that good. It sounds to me like the situation here in, in the scripture where the Bible says that Jesus saw two ships standing by the lake, but the fishermen were gone out of them and were washing their nets. And the Bible says in verse 3, and he entered one of the ships, which happens to be that of Simon Peter, and told Simon Peter, uh, you know, can you just move a little and, and so that I can have space to talk with folks. I, I, I can I can figure out how I, I you know Peter felt because uh, he's already frustrated being a family man and he had told all the night and did not catch one single fish and Peter would be getting back home and the kids would be looking uh, for work for the father to bring some provision for the house but today or this time it was just you know one of those very what people call very bad days you may say that you are having a bad season you may say that you are having a difficult time but i came to talk to you this morning that jesus is alive if you will just allow him step into your boat something good can happen this morning hallelujah and the bible says peter he might have been grumbling, he might have not have said a word, but you know, I know how it would feel that you have walked through the whole night and you did not catch one single fish and now you were ready to go home and you're washing your net. You just want to get out of that situation and go home and think of what next to do. And here comes the master and say, give me some time. I'm already in your boat. Can you pull in, you know, into the water? Give me some space to talk to these folks. Uh, I don't think it was an exact, I, I don't think Peter really heard the same that Jesus was preaching that day because when you're frustrated sometimes you can just even hear anything your mind is preoccupied with what you're going to do and what you're not going to do well okay fine Peter was a little bit patient it's okay fine I, I hang around I don't know how long you're gonna take but you know what I'm ready to hit the road and so the Bible says Peter trusted into a little bit into the water and waited, you know, for Jesus to finish his sermon speaking to the people. And the Bible says when Jesus was done speaking to the people, he said something like this in verse 4. In verse 4, he said, Now when they had left speaking, when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, launch out into the deep and let your nets you know for a, let down your nets for a drought so you know when the bible said when jesus uh, finished speaking to uh, to the the crowd to the to his to the people that he was speaking to he turned to peter who would have been sitting down here frustrated ready to go if you know he walked through the whole night and nothing he did not catch anything looks to me like a life that is so frustrated now it looks to me that you know god is speaking to somebody who would be saying well the the year is already going to have i and i have not 
you know, even I've not even attempted part of the things that I wanted to do this year. I think that this year is just gone. I think that it's just a wasted year. I came to I talk to that person this morning. You are the person that I'm speaking to this morning. That God has a plan for you. There is is never too late for God. With God, the Bible said nothing. Hallelujah. Absolutely nothing is impossible. God does not require the time that we require to get things done. You might be saying half of the year is gone. COVID-19 has destroyed everything. Business and economies cannot blah, 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 blah. hold on there because the Bible says for with God nothing is impossible. Hallelujah. With God nothing is impossible. So Peter was in that kind of situation here in this book of Luke chapter number 5 and in verse 4 when Jesus said, the Bible said when Jesus left speaking after he has finished his ministry or ministering to the people, he turned to Peter and said to Peter, let down the net for a drought. And Peter said something like this, watch this. And, and, and he said to him, Master, with due respect, ha ha ha, Master, we have toiled all night and have taken nothing we have used our skills we have used our knowledge we have the best technology we have the best strategy but you know what i am a phd holder in fishing and i have experience fishing in this lake if you look at my age master jesus i am quite older than you but you know what i've been fishing here even before you were born and i know at this point in time the fishes are not going to be it's not going to be possible to catch any fish if you do not succeed in the night catching one you will not succeed in the night catching in the day I mean you will not succeed catching any fish in the daytime so master I, I would want to say that thank you for for the opportunity but I have an experience am I speaking to somebody this morning who will say well you know you know what you don't really understand my situation you don't really understand how I feel you don't really understand what the doctor has told me you don't really understand you know what is going on in my life you don't have an idea of what it is like to be in my shoes you don't have an idea of what it is like you know what I am going through so if, if you just give me a break and so Peter would have said like that to the master master uh, we have told all night I have an experience I have been fishing here for too long I know when it is time a good time that's why I came in the night if I wanted to keep on struggling I would have come in the day but there's something that Peter said he said nevertheless oh Lord I love that nevertheless I, I don't know what you're going through now but if you can just be like Peter and say nevertheless nevertheless I have tried it before nevertheless I have prayed before nevertheless I have fasted before nevertheless they have ministered for me nevertheless 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 if you can just take that position this morning I know that the power of God will flow into your life. I know the glory of God will manifest in your life. If you can just take that position like Peter took and he said, Master, we have toiled all night. Master, I have experience. Master, my skill set is the best. Master, I know what I am doing. But nevertheless, at thy word, at thy instruction, I will let down the net. It will not cost me anything, but I just want to let you know that my experience does not rhyme with what you are asking me to do. My skill set does not rhyme with what you are asking me to do. My experience does not tally with your instruction, but I am just going to obey your instruction nevertheless. Am I talking to somebody this morning who will say, nevertheless, who will say, Dr. Michelle, nevertheless, I have had people before, I have had opportunity, but nevertheless, I am just going to do what the master asked me to do this morning. The master said, let down your net for a drought. He did not say for, a, for, for just what, try, he said, let down, it was a clear instruction, drop your net for a big 
catch. It's not just a catch. You know, it's not too late for you to make it in 2020. It's not too late for your dream to manifest. I have said it doesn't take God anything to do what he wants to do. For the Bible has totally declared that for with God, nothing is impossible. I came to talk to somebody this morning that you need to let down your net. You need to let go of your experience. You need to let go of your skill and just depend on the master. We are in unusual season and in this unusual season, we have to do things that we have not done before. Just let down the net for a drive. That's the instruction of the master. You need to go out there and say, I am going to let down my net for a drought this morning. I'm going to go out there. I'll let down my net for a drought. Uh, watch this. Watch this. Let's go on. Let's go on. Hallelujah. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. The net. Nevertheless, uh, I, see, see, my experience <laughs> does not rhyme with what you're talking about. <laughs> Master, I, you know, I know this, I know this lake. I've been fishing here for quite some years. I do have experience. There are some of the good days, but I came to tell you that today is just one of the bad days. But you know what? Nevertheless, hallelujah. Nevertheless, <clears throat> nevertheless, I will let down the net. Hallelujah. And watch this. Watch this. In verse 6. And when they had this done, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes and their net red. And their net red. When they had obeyed the master, there was so much fish that ran into the net that their net could not handle it. <laughs> I came to talk to somebody this morning that if you want to experience the power of God, I know that there is something that the Lord has been laying in in on your heart to do. If you've been arguing with yourself, you've been thinking, I know that this is unusual, but if you can just obey unusual you know, instruction for an unusual miracle, if you want to get something that you've not gotten before, you need to do something that you've not done before. Peter, let down the net for a drive in the daylight, not in the night. You are used to operating in the night, which you are so sure that you will catch a fish. But, you know, it's already daytime and your net is already washed and you're about to give up and say, so, well, the doctor says it's incurable. Well, medical science says there is no solution. I came to talk to you this morning that if you will let down the net and if you will allow the master to come into your boat, the boat of your life, the boat of your family, the boat of your business, the boat of your enterprise. If you will open up for the master this morning, Jesus Christ, if you will invite the master, if you will say, Master, you know, I have toiled all night. Master, I have tried with my own skill and experience. Master, I have used my talent and my experience and my education is not helping me, Master, Master, but at thy word, I will do it. This morning, you will experience the power of the Most High God. God will manifest in your life. And the Bible says that they enclose such multitude of fish that, you know, their net began to break. Hallelujah. Their net began to break. This morning, I came to speak to somebody that if you will open up your life and just allow the master to come in and you will obey the word of God, the power of God will be manifested in your life. The glory of God will show in your life. The Bible said the eyes of the Lord runs to and fro all the earth, you know, looking for those whose heart are perfect towards him, looking for people who will put their trust in him. God is desperate to demonstrate his power. How you say, Doctor, how do you know that? I know because the Bible says he neither slumber nor sleep. And I was asking myself, if God is an almighty God, if God owns the heavens and the earth, if he has all the power, if he has all the wisdom, if he has all the knowledge, why can't he just sleep? And the Holy Spirit said to me, God does not slumber nor sleep because his eyes is running toward and throughout the entire earth. He's looking for somebody like you this morning who will serve in a master. And then nevertheless, 
at thy word. I will just do it. I will do it. And when you obey God, the power of God will manifest in your situation. When you obey God, it might be an unusual instruction. It might be an unusual direction. It might be an unusual territory. And you say, well, I, you know, I, I don't have experience in this area. You don't need experience. You need the master. You don't need skill. You need the master. Just obey. Just obey. If, say, if you're willing and obedient, you will eat the good of the land. If you're willing and obedient, you will eat the good of the land. It takes willingness. It just takes the desire to obey God and say, well, I will let go. You know, I, I will take, you know, I, I say sometimes that faith is like a risk, taking a risk. And those who don't take risk in life, they don't succeed. Those who are always in the comfort zone, they don't make it in life. It is those who step out uh, there and attempt to walk on the water like Peter looking unto Jesus. If you will step out there and say, well, it looks like this year is over, but for me it's not over because I serve a living God. The Bible says, if God be for us, who can be against us? If God is for you, 2020, coronavirus, whatever it is, diabetes, cancer, whatever is the situation, there is nothing that is greater than God. The Bible said the name of Jesus Christ is highly exalted above every other name. At the dimension of the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow of the things that are in heaven and the things that are on earth, even the things that are beneath the earth. The Bible said that name, that name, there is power in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. There's so much power in the name of Jesus. God has invested in the entirety of his power in the name of Jesus Christ. So when you mention that name, even the, in heaven and earth and even beneath the earth, wherever it is, every knee bows. Glory to the Lord. So if you will say this morning, like Peter, nevertheless, I will let down the net. Just by instruction, the power of obedience. Just obey. I, I know time will not allow me to share with you, you know, because you know sometimes obedience, you know, to to you know to God is you know is, is very difficult because it is instruction and direction that we are not accustomed to. Like I said in the beginning, He says, "My ways are not your ways, and my thoughts are not your thoughts." But you know what? So if, if all what you need to do is to come to the position and say, I don't understand this. I, you know, uh, I'm just going to do it because he says do it. Just like, he, you know, the mother, the mother told the disciple, whatever he asked you to do, oh Lord, whatever he asked you to do, just do it. Don't try to understand. Don't figure out. Don't try to, you know, to, you know, to discuss it. Don't try to seek opinion. Just do it. Just do it. Whatever he asks you to do, just do it. That is the only way we are going to succeed in this season. By complete obedience to God. The Bible said to obey is better than sacrifice. It's better than all the time if you just obey God. It's better than all you know the energy that you put in trying to get things done. You know, just obey God. It happened exactly to Joshua. The Bible says in the book of Joshua, chapter number six, that Jericho was strictly tied up because of the city of Israel, you know, because of the children of Israel. Jericho was a fortified city. And God said to, to, to Joshua, See, I have given you Jericho and his mighty men there. And, and the next was an instruction. He said, Go down, you know, you know, go there, and this is what I want you to do. You just walk around the walls of Jericho every day. And then, you know, and go back home and rest and do that for seven days. On the seven days, shout hallelujah and the walls will fall. That is, you know, an unusual, you know, instruction. And, 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 and but Joshua understood that, you know, you know, you know, that, that he was admonished, that, you know, that he would meditate on the word of God to be careful to do, you know, say, this word of the Lord shall not depart from them, but he should take note to meditate and to take time to obey every instruction then you will make your way prosperous and then you will have you will make your way it is you that will make your way it is your obedience to the instruction of the word of god that will open you up to success many today are thinking how am i going to succeed after all of this i come to talk to somebody it is your willingness to obey the word of the lord 
that is going to open you up to success. When you obey God, the power of God comes into your situation. When you obey God, the glory of God manifests. God is more desperate. I came to realize that. That God is, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm speaking like a man. You know, this is a metaphor that God is more desperate to, to, to manifest his power than you want it. God is so desperate. When we talk about the issue of blood, the, the, the woman with the issue of blood the other day, who came behind the press and touched the garment, you know, and, and Jesus did not even pray for her. Jesus he did not do anything. You know, I, I was wondering what happened. But the eyes of the Lord that is running to and fro the entire earth were just looking for somebody who will believe. Hallelujah. God is looking for somebody this morning who will say, Yes, I believe. Lord, I believe you will be like that that man who you know while the Bible in the same book of Mark chapter number five you know from verse twenty five downwards and after that woman you know had getting this miracle the Bible said before then there was a man that came to call Jesus you know one of the one of the leaders that came to call Jesus that her daughter is sick and and while Jesus said okay fine I'm I'm coming to see I'm coming to see your daughter and the Bible said while they were still on the way oh lord jesus while they were, somebody came from the house and said there is no need to trouble the master there is no need to waste time anymore they need to bring the master but you know what because your daughter is already dead this situation cannot be redeemed this situation is out of control this situation there's nothing anybody can do all oh, Hold on there, hold on there. There is somebody that can do anything and everything about any situation and every situation that you cannot handle. And his name is Jesus. Hallelujah. And the Bible says that Jesus turned to the man and said, you know, uh, you know, don't worry. All what you need to do is to believe. And the man said, I don't know what you're talking about. But, you know, help my unbelief. I came to ask somebody. If you don't, just ask, Lord, I, I, I want to believe. Help me to believe. And the man said, Lord, help me. Help me. Help me. I want to believe. And, and, and if you read that story in that same scripture, that man got her daughter back to life. Nothing is impossible with the daughter that you serve. Bow your heads in prayer this morning. I just want you to straight fold your hands. Wherever you are right now, the power of God is going to come to your situation. God is not limited. It's not about me. It's about you holding out in your heart and say, nevertheless, somebody has prayed for me before. Nevertheless, I have tried everything before. But this morning, you are like that woman with the issue of blood and say, today, today, I will touch the hem of the garment of Jesus and I will be made whole. You are that person that said, nevertheless, nevertheless, no matter all the facts and the figures and the, everything is against me, but nevertheless, as you said this morning, I just obey. It's simple. Just obey. Just lift up your hands, straight from your hands to that screen and touch it right there. And the power of God is about to move into your situation. The glory of God is about to move. Just like that woman touched the hem of the garment. The power of God is about to be released this morning. In the name of Jesus Yes, reach out right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, we give you glory, we give you praise, we give you honor, we give you adoration. Thank you, Lord, this morning. You say your ways are higher than our ways. Your thoughts are higher than our thoughts. We can never comprehend how you can do things. But there's something that you said unto us that you are able to do oh, exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask and think. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus, for you are the God of the impossible. You are the one that makes a way where there is no way. You are the one that brings out water in, 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 in the rock, in the wilderness. Water out of the rock in the wilderness. You are the I am that I am. The one that says you will become what you become. Father, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, I command right now that your power will move into that man's life, into that woman's life, into that you know, child's life, to 
everybody under the sound of my voice this morning in the name of Jesus Christ you say if we are willing and obedient we shall eat the good of the land father lord your children are willing this morning master master they say nevertheless nevertheless we will obey you this morning they are obeying by lifting up their hands by closing their eyes by connecting right now in the name of Jesus Christ let the same power that lifted up Jesus from the grave, the supernatural power, the same resurrection power that hate, health, and death could not stop. Bible says on that day when when it was time for Jesus, even the stone rolled away. Father, let the stone of sickness, let the stone of disease, let the stone of circumstances, let the stone of crisis be rolled away right now in the life of your children. Let the power of the Most High God manifest in your situation. Father, show yourself strong and mighty. You said that you, you will not share your glory with any man. Lord, I ask that you will manifest your power. Manifest your power. Manifest your power in that person's life, in that boy's life, in that girl's life, in that person in the hospital bed who is gasping for bread right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, no matter what is the situation, coronavirus or not, cancer, heart attack, you know, epilepsy, whatever is the situation, Father, in the name of Jesus, let your power flow through right now. 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 In the name of Jesus, I command you be here. I command that situation to change. I command that circumstances to change. I release the Koto Satayama. I release the glory of God into your life right now. I release the power of God into that situation right now. Receive your miracle. Receive your miracle. Receive your miracle. Receive your miracle. In the name of Jesus. Holy Ghost, move in the life of your children. Father, you are not limited by time and space. Your eyes is running to and through the entire... You are scanning the globe right now. You are scanning the houses right now. You are scanning the businesses right now. For somebody that will say, nevertheless, nevertheless, I will obey this instruction this morning. Nevertheless, this is my day. Somebody that will say, today, when I touch the hem of his garment, when I reach out, today is my day of miracle. Today is my day of deliverance. Today is my day of salvation. I break every person, every power of darkness, every person under the spell of any satanic bondage, witchcraft, manipulation. I break that power right now in the name of Jesus. In your marriage, I break it. In your business, I break it. In your finances, I break it. In the name of Jesus, I command you to be free. For the Bible says, Whosoever the Son of God shall make free, shall set free, shall be free indeed. I release you. In the name of Jesus, receive your deliverance, receive your miracle, receive your breakthrough, receive it right now. In the name of Jesus, thank you Lord this morning. We give you glory, we give you praise, we give you adoration. What a wonderful morning, what a glorious day, what a time to be alive. Hallelujah. This is the year my spiritual covering apostle Dr. Dana Carson said that this is a decade of the champions and champions are those who focus on the things that they want to do, not the things that have gone through. Forget about yesterday, today is a brand new day, you've not seen this day before. Take time and enjoy this day. The Bible said this is the day that the Lord has made and we shall be glad and we shall rejoice in this day. Thank you so much for being a part of this wonderful fellowship. We give glory to the Lord this morning and we thank him for his mercies because out of his mercies we are alive this morning. It is not because of works of righteousness. It's not because we are very good. It's not because of the things that we do. It is out of his mercy that we are able to be alive today. And I want to thank God for this great opportunity that he has given me and you to enjoy this day. It's a brand new day. Step out there. Nevertheless, hallelujah. Nevertheless, no matter what the experience have been before, today is a brand new day. Walk out there and 
and make it happen. The power of God is on the side, your side. The glory of God is on your side. Power is on your side. God is for you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We are missionaries, you know, under the Danakas and Kingdom Ministries position here in Europe for to bring the to, to as John the Baptist to usher in the kingdom ministry of Apostle Dr. Benakasi. And we ask you to, you know, many of you have asked, how do we support you? We're going to put out the information there, how you can support us through our headquarters in Houston, Texas. And we are here, you know, ready and prepared to be of a blessing to you at any point in time. Our phone number is on the screen there. You can call, you can text, and we'll suffer for prayers and counseling 24-7. We are willing to be of any assistance to you in any way that we can. God bless you and welcome to this, to this wonderful day. Later on today, our uh, covering, my dad, Apostle Dr. Danakasin, will be on Bible study. The Bible says, study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that did not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Hallelujah. So, so be ready and join us later in the afternoon. It could be, you know, let this be your breakfast or maybe it's your lunch. Maybe it's you're already in your dinner if you're listening to me from China or some other place in Asia. It could be, it could be your dinner. But whatever it is, at least, you know, you know, desire the sincere milk of the word. Join us in the Bible study later today. All the information is going to be on the screen just in a moment. And God bless you. And looking forward to be with you again tomorrow morning, 6 o'clock Central European time, and for another time of prayer, another time of sharing the word of God. And we are excited. God bless you. And thank you so much for being a part of this. Just watch out for the rest of the announcement this hour as we as we you know you know fellowship together in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. The world thank is you, Lord full Jesus. of people who thank are you, Lord Jesus. many live their thank lives you, in thank fear, you, thank shame, you. loneliness, you depression, have. and the list goes on and on. What if I told you that you could help change the lives of hurting people? Would you do it? Most people really desire to make an impact in the lives of others around the world. They just don't have a context that supports their desire. Well, Dana Carson Kingdom Ministries invites you to do what you've always wanted to do. Help change lives around the world. What exactly is Dana Carson Kingdom Ministries doing to change lives? The Bible says in Matthew 24, 14, And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all the nations, and then the end will come. Dana Carson Kingdom Ministries is taking the good news of the gospel of the kingdom around the world through television, radio, and the Kingdom Reformation Crusades, and people's lives are being changed. How can you help change lives? When you sow a monthly seed of $20 or more, you help share the love of God to the masses. You help send missionaries throughout the world to impact communities for God's kingdom. And most importantly, you help win souls for the kingdom of God. All it takes is your monthly seed of $20 or more, and you can help change the world. To partner with Dana Carson Kingdom Ministries today, simply go online to drdanacarson.com forward slash partners or call 281-824-4190. That's 281-824-4190. You can also mail in your monthly seed to 7401 Gulf Freeway, Houston, Texas 77017. Thank you in advance for partnering with Dana Carson Kingdom Ministries, and we look forward to taking the kingdom to the world with you.